If you're running on lower end hardware or simply want to get into the high refresh rate territory within Escape from Tarkov, I'm going to test FSR 1.0, DLSS, and NIS in a variety of situations so that you know which upscaler is the best for your situation. Now, I did not go into every single map for this testing, but I did try to go to a variety of environments so you guys could get a good idea of the quality of each upscaler and which one to use based on what situation you play in the most. Before we go into the individual results though, I want to talk about what each upscaler does and how each one works. If you know how each one works already and you want to skip that, there are timestamps in the description. But to anybody who doesn't know how these work, let me quickly explain. So two of these, NIS or NVIDIA Image Scaling and AMD FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution are both spatial upscalers. What this means is that they take each individual frame one at a time and upscale it through tools and algorithms that attempt to make out details and upscale those details. Where NIS and FSR 1.0 differ, however, is in their application. FSR 1.0 must be directly implemented into a game via the render pipeline, aka it's not simply applied to the game after everything else is already rendered. This keeps parts of the game such as the HUD at set at the native resolution, which improves the overall experience of the game. This can also improve the upscaler's quality, but this is debated. NIS, however, is applied after the entire render pipeline is finished, meaning that the native quality of the HUD is lost and it upscales everything within the game. This can be both an upside and a downside because it means things around the HUD may get more blurry as you downgrade the resolutions and it upscales further. Also, parts of the HUD, such as the timer, and your stamina bar are going to be bigger on your screen than if you had FSR or DLSS running. Now, DLSS is similar to FSR in that it applies within the pipeline, so it's not like NIS where it applies after. However, it differs from both of these other upscalers because it is a temporal upscaler that uses AI. So using this AI technology called tensor cores within the 20 and 30 series cards, DLSS takes data from motion vectors aka this group of pixels moves from here to here, along with other details collected over several frames to create a composite higher quality image on the output that is quote unquote said and claimed to be higher quality than native, but this really depends on a game by game basis. To find out which one is truly the king, we should hop into a couple examples so I can give you guys some advice. So the first thing I want to point out to you guys is that the reliability and viability of NIS is questionable at best. See, NIS isn't directly within Escape from Tarkov. In order to apply this upscaler, you need to A, have an NVIDIA card, and B, go to your NVIDIA control panel and enable it through there. Then you have to go back into the game and set a custom resolution that's the same aspect ratio for NIS to upscale to your monitor's resolution. There are a couple downsides to this, with some being more minor than others, but one of the main ones that I found is that it has to be in full screen. You can't have a borderless window when you apply NIS, which means that tabbing in and out during a raid, or whenever really, is sort of a pain in the ass. Secondarily, NIS has the worst FPS gain out of all of the upscalers. For example, on Factory, and this is off the top of my head, and I'll probably confirm this for you guys in text, but... On factory, natively, I was running about 115 FPS just sitting at the base of my benchmark, and then turning on NIS got me to roughly 140. Uh, and compared to FSR 1.0 and DLSS's results, that really wasn't much to go off of. With FSR 1.0 simply being a single click and you're good, I feel like NIS is sort of outclassed in that aspect. Not to mention that FSR generally gives me an extra 10 frames. I don't know if you hear that. The there's a bombardment going on outside. Though you can get NIS to look pretty good, it still doesn't look quite right, and a lot of things are often too over sharpened, even when you have the sharpening slider set all the way to zero. For me, the quality of NIS combined with its lack of performance gain when compared to FSR 1.0 and DLSS makes it a no-go for me, and I think I said something in my reserve clips, which I'll try to show here if it was of any value. And the shimmering is insane. Like, I can't... Even FXA doesn't really do the trick either. You could see up there too when I move, but focus in on it in the recording. Holy. Like, that's. And then TAA, when I put that on, it's more stable, but it's a bit more blurry. 
It's just not worth it. That means NIS gets the bronze medal. But who gets silver? Honestly, both FSR 1.0 and DLSS get a gold star for me, but I'll explain the pros and cons of each right now. FSR 1.0 has more availability. Simply put, this means people who don't have a 20 or 30 series card can use FSR 1.0. The quality that you get from FSR 1.0 in general is slightly worse than DLSS. Really the only good thing that I've seen from FSR 1.0 is that there's generally less ghosting, but that may be me with a blind eye and I'm not actually seeing the ghosting, but I can definitely notice the ghosting in DLSS even when on quality mode. FSR 1.0 has a bit less ghosting and is a bit more competitive overall I'd say, though the quality and clarity at longer ranges is definitely less. If you don't have a 20 or 30 series card and you're looking for an upscaler, use FSR 1.0 as that thing kicks ass and an ultra quality, it boosts your performance by a good bit, and it makes sure that the game doesn't look like complete ass. If you're wondering if I'd go to quality or below, my general advice would be no. Only downgrade the quality of the upscale if you have to, because you want the highest quality possible in order to spot enemies at a further distance. Now, if you're like me and you have a 20 or 30 series GPU on hand, and you're playing Escape from Tarkov, and you need the performance boost, then I'd recommend using DLSS. It is a niche category, but for those who really need it, it can be a lifesaver, and the quality that you get from it is fairly good. You can still tell that it's being upscaled, but the clarity at further distances is good, and the shimmering effect that you see on FSR 1.0, especially on these bars on reserve that I'll put on screen right now, kind of make DLSS worth it, in my opinion, over FSR 1.0. Not to mention that generally you get a few extra frames to boot by using DLSS. Sometimes I saw up to 15 extra frames, but that can vary. And keep in mind that we're talking about the difference between 150 and 165 FPS. So that's also a factor. To sum everything up, here's my opinion. Use DLSS on 20 and 30 series cards for every single application within Tarkov, I mean. And if you don't have a 20 or 30 series card, jump to FSR 1.0 and stick with the highest quality settings possible for either option. I'll leave some more quality benchmarks on screen as I finish talking here, just so you guys can see the differences between FSR 1.0 and DLSS, and choose which one you like more. If you're on a 20 or 30 series card, and you like the way FSR 1.0 looks more than DLSS, then go for it, unless you really need the extra frames from DLSS. The one warning I'm going to give to you guys who are using 20 and 30 series cards, or just in general want to use FSR 1.0, is that FSR 1.0 requires TAA anti-aliasing or temporal anti-aliasing. If you try to go and disable TAA and then try to enable FSR 1.0, it will not function. I know for some people TAA makes their game look very blurry and they don't like having the anti-aliasing feature. So if you're one of those people, you may want to steer clear of FSR 1.0 because it may dampen your experience overall and you may want to just take a bit of the frame hit. If you're fine with TAA though, go for it, enable it, and then enable FSR 1.0. Let me know of your guys' experience with FSR 1.0, DLSS, and NIS in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching this video. Oh, and by the way, compared to FSR 1.0 and DLSS, never use NIS. In my opinion, it's too clunky, not integrated properly, and the FPS that you get from it is worse than FSR 1.0 and DLSS. So, NIS is eliminated. Thank you all so much for all the support I've been getting lately on my videos. I really appreciate you guys when you leave comments and communicate with each other about problems or conclusions that you found in your own testing. It really makes my day and I love responding to you guys down there. So if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, make sure to leave them in the comments below and make sure to like the video. And if you want to talk to other like-minded people, I do have a Discord that's linked in the first line of the description down below if you want to get pinged for when I go host again. I can't believe we're almost at 500 subs. It's pretty insane how far we've gone so far, and I can't wait to grow even further with you guys. So for now, that is all, and I hope... Oh, I just hit my mic. For now, guys, that is all. Make sure to sub, like, all that jazz, and I will see you guys in the next one. This is Clem, blocking out. Later. <laughs>